good <clears throat> good morning or good afternoon or good evening or whenever you're listening. My name is William Lawson of the Saxophone Factory. Trust that you are well. Listen, we're going to do a, um, a sort of a Q&A, sort of answer some questions I get, uh, especially because I teach a lot of beginning students, both adult and, and, and youngster. And uh, I'm just going to go through three things, three or four things today. And if you have questions, just put them in that down in the comments uh, section. Um, I got a question today on fingering charts. And um, yes, every beginning book I've seen worth anything has a fingering chart in it. Uh, and I actually, if you are looking for a fingering chart, I can leave a, um, a, a link to a PDF down in the description box that I found. Uh, it worked. That, that, that's, that's really good, I think, um, and should help you a lot. In any case, let's get started. Uh, <clears throat> got, we, all, we all understand that without reeds, without a reed, um, the saxophone won't make any noise. Duh. Won't make any noise. And there is lots of discussion on reeds. There's, there's all sorts of different strengths and, and, and mentalities about, you know, what should happen when, you know, when you move level to level. Uh, a lot of band directors have the uh, mentality that, you know, the, 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 strong, the better you get as a player or longer you've played, the stronger reed you, you you should play play with, and sometimes when you go to the music store and ask them, um, that's exactly what they tell you. Uh, I disagree. I completely disagree. I think that, well, I know that the strength reed that you play is completely dependent upon two things: the kind of mouthpiece you have, and the kind of sound you want to produce. There you go. Um, and, it, and it's simply because um, the strength of the reed measures with the tip of the tip, tip, tip opening of the mouthpiece. The far, the more open that is, more than likely, depending on what kind of sound you want to get, the softer reed or the lower in the number. Reeds go from 0.5 to 5 plus with five, five plus being the firmer read, I guess, and for lack of better terms, and the 0.5 being the softest of reads for lack of better terms. Um, most beginning mouthpieces that you will find out there will work just fine with a two and a, with what's the two and a half read, just fine. Um, and that would, and for me as a, as a teacher of beginning students, primarily beginning students, I find that that's the best way. You have to make sure that the reed is in good shape, uh, making sure that it's all even uh, and that um, there are no chips in it, and it sits even and, and it sits flat on the mouthpiece. And uh, we're going to do another video to show you what that should look like. Um, so hang on. Uh, I'll tell you, we'll show you exactly what that looks like when you get a read out of the box. Um, if you can tell if it's going to, going to play well or not. Uh, and there's, and there's, a, there's some really easy ways to find that out. So again, subscribe, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel right now. And that way hit the notification bell. So when that video does come out and it's going to come out this week, maybe tomorrow or maybe, maybe Tuesday, uh, you'll be able to, to see exactly what to look for when you take a read out of read out of the box because just because it's new because it's a brand new read you just bought doesn't mean it's a very good read these are natural products that come from the ground right this these are the, these are farmed pieces of, of of wood that are you know a lot of times you know people have shaved them by hand or whatever and so there's lots of differences in them you may get one that's a um, uh you know a Tuesday afternoon read where the um, where all the machines are working well and the, and the employees are working well or you may get a um, a Monday after a long weekend <laughs> a read that's just not as good as it could be so I'll show you a couple of ways to check that out um, in a future video so please um, go ahead and subscribe again start with a two and a half read. I think twos for the most part, if you're if you're looking at uh, Van Dorn reads, which is sort of the 
blue box standard of reads. Now there are a lot of other kinds of reads, obviously. Um, but if we look, we're, we're, we're talking about Van Doren's um, as sort of the standard, about a two and a half is fine um, to get you started. If, if you have it on, 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 if it's wet and you have it on the mouthpiece correctly, uh, you shouldn't have any, you, you, you really shouldn't have any problem on any of the beginning mouthpieces. And I begin, and I mean, the beginning mouthpieces are the ones that come with the instruments, like the stock mouthpieces. Um, all right. Now that we're talking about mouthpieces for a second, uh, most of the time, not all the time, the stock mouthpiece for a beginner is usually fine if you have a decent read on it and your, and your embouchure is where it should be. Now, you're not going to sound like Charlie Parker or you're not going to sound like uh, John Coltrane or Sigurd Rasher on a stock mouthpiece. Of course not, because the mouthpiece does matter. I know there are a lot, I mean, there's a lot of teaching out there that it goes, it's the player, not the equipment. Yeah, it's the player and the equipment. <laughs> That's the deal. It's the player and the equipment. So if you um have a, um, a crappy mouthpiece or a badly designed mouthpiece, with a crappy read on it, um, you're going to sound crappy. So, so it, actually, mouthpieces make it easier to get the kind of sound you want. Uh, I suggest from beginners, because I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically for beginners. I'm not talking to you guys who have been playing 3, 4, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. I'm talking to beginners. Uh, I like, personally, of all the stock mouthpieces out there, I think the Yamaha 4C and 5C for Barry are probably the best of these stock metal pieces out there. I and, and and I like them because you because they're not very expensive. They're not. And um the two and a half reeds throughout the the alto tenor and baritone um families work well on them if they are good reeds and set up properly. And that should be a really good starting point because all of this is getting a really good starting point, right? Um, so so often we just sort of get started in, in the most haphazard of ways and develop all these horrific habits. Because a lot of these videos on YouTube and the like are not directed at, the, at beginners. They're directed, you know, at people who have been playing for a while and people who have have, you know, money to spend and they're looking to play a certain genre of music. They're not looking just to get started playing the saxophone and playing the saxophone well. So, you know, I've said reads two and a half, fine. I wouldn't play anything harder than that to start with or, or softer than that to start with um, because the two and a half gives you that impetus to use enough air and um, where, a, where a softer read doesn't require as much air for, for it to vibrate. Uh, so it, it developed a habit of really not supporting the sound with the air. So a two and a half is fine, depending on, on what mouth is you have. Um, there's, I mean, and if you watch a lot of videos, there's a lot of things about ligatures. Okay, basic, very basic. The ligature serves one purpose, to hold the read on. <laughs> okay, The ligature holds one purpose, to hold the read on. Um, most of the ligatures are made of metal, especially when you get started. And um, the idea is to make sure that the ligature isn't bent. Because if it's bent, it's really not formed around the mouthpiece well. And it's not really holding the, holding the reed on so it doesn't, so air doesn't leak out. So it's important that, that if you have a, one of those, you know, metal ligatures, that it's not, check out that it's not bent. Um, that it hasn't been stepped on or anything because that happens a lot. You know, when you're a beginner, it falls out out of your case and somebody steps on it and now you have to sort of reform it because it's like, right? So you, you want to make sure that it is nice and round to the, or, or rounded to the mouthpiece. The The downside of that is that when you do get a new mouthpiece, you'll if you have a metal ligature, you will probably need another ligature because that ligature will have been formed to that mouthpiece and probably won't form as well to your new mouthpiece. But we'll talk about that when, when we talk about mouthpieces in particular. Ligatures, for the most part, for most of us, don't matter. Now, there are some ligatures out there that are pretty doggone good. Uh, I've personally, in my own playing, only found one that made a huge difference, but I'm sure there are others out there. 
So for most of us, especially if, if we're just starting to play the saxophone, don't spend a bunch of money on a ligature. Don't. Just don't. You will not, you will not get the benefit from it. So do not go out there and watch a bunch of YouTube videos and go to go to the music store and get sold a $75 mount, uh, ligature. Don't do it. Don't do it. Get the $6 ligature. Put that bad boy on there. And I know you will have questions about um, the um, the vinyl or the, le uh, or the leather, leather ligatures. That's hard for me to say. Um, and we'll talk about that when we talk about mount in, in, in a future video when we talk about specifically mouthpieces. So again, subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure that you are aware when those videos come out. Now the instrument. The most important part about the instrument, especially when you're a beginner, is that it is in great working condition. And the best thing about, uh, and, and the best way to make sure that happens is to take it to a licensed certified technician to make sure that it is in the best condition possible. That means that all the pads are seating just pro properly and it's not leaking any air, okay? That is very, very important. Otherwise, it's really difficult to play and difficult to play well and in tune and all those kinds of things. So it is, it is extremely important that more than brand, more than any of that stuff, that you find an instrument that is in great working condition. And if it isn't in work, good working condition, get it in working condition. Get it so it plays well, as well as it can play. Because frankly, for most of us, when we're starting, that is where I'll, in a lesson, I'm telling you, probably, and I've been teaching since 1985 privately, I have seeing students struggle on this or that, especially like getting low notes and found out that the problem wasn't the student necessarily. It was that the low C sharp key was open or the, uh, the lower stack where the low B flat is was bent and the keys didn't close. And so the student couldn't get the note to come out or the D sharp key um, was bent and they couldn't get the, the, the bottom stack. And the, that's the notes from like um, D, C sharp, C, low B, low B flat to come out. Uh, not because they their aperture wasn't good, it's because their horn was leaking. Or they couldn't play an F and you know, a, 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 a middle F because one of the uh, keys were, were out of adjustment. Again, it is very, very important to make sure that the instrument is in great working condition and get that done at a cert, you know, with a certified technician to look over your horn. Even if you buy your instrument like at a pawn shop or you buy it at a yard sale, um, get someone to go over it. If it's been, if, you, if it's your own instrument has been sitting in your attic um, since you were in fourth grade, get someone to go over it. Figure into the cost that very first repair. Now, that very first repair does not need to be an overhaul. Now, I know there are people who are can't wait to sell you an overhaul for hundreds of dollars. For the most part, when we are starting, that is not necessary. We just want to make sure that the thing doesn't leak. So one of the things you might say to the technician is one of the things I want you to check is I want you to check for leaks. Get it in playing condition. And if we and if and when we get better and we think that um, we deserve a better instrument, then we will have that conversation here. Now, you're going to ask, so what's a good instrument to start on? Well, there's a, there's a whole bunch. Uh, when I when I talk about what's a good instrument to start on, I I always say the same phrase: stay in the main road. Stay on the main road. I know there's a lot of and we see a lot of videos out there on Amazon saxophones versus the Yanagasawa saxophone, where you have a two hundred dollar saxophone versus a five thousand dollar saxophone. 
and a very, very good player makes them sound the same. <laughs> Let me relate a really quick story. Uh, we were at the uh, Florida Allstate um, Music Convention. My teacher from Florida State stopped by a booth and picked up a student instrument of a not so great saxophone brand. When with a stock mouthpiece, sounded amazing. And he said, oh, this is pretty good. And we went, no, it's not you. You. <laughs> it's you. Because you can make a lead pipe um, with a, you know, with a plastic straw sound good. Right? And most of us are not that. Most of us are just trying to, we really need the horn to work well. So stay in the main road. And when I say stay in the main road, I mean, I mean, go ahead, because I know you're looking for brands. So I'm going to give you the brands. The, the beginning Yamaha instruments are, are, are really good. Um, if you can find an old Bundy, B-U-N-D, which is, was made by Selmer, good brand. Um, some of the beginning uh, Selmer instruments are very, very good. Now, they may end up being more pricey. Um, before you go on to brands like Yanagasawa, or cannonball, even even some of the well, even some of the beginning cannonball instruments, some of the, the lower cannonball instruments are very good. But the most important thing is this. Make sure it's in good working condition. I'm going to say something that a lot of people watching the video will not like. If you are a beginning saxophone player, and I don't care if you play other 14 other instruments, there is no reason why you should take a really good Mark VI out of circulation to learn to play the saxophone. You're keeping that instrument away from somebody who can already play. Don't do that. And I say that for you, uh, uh, to you because of this, um, before, before I end the video. When I pick up the bass, the bass guitar, uh, I made sure that I just got a beginning bass, $199, $199 bass. I had access to, uh, to better basses. But I really believe that I'd just be taking a really good bass out of the hands of somebody who could re who really play it. Who wasn't just going to read the letters on the lead sheet. Could really make music with that with that particular instrument. And was going to play it a lot and was going to get some use out of it. So I was so so the one hundred ninety nine dollar beginning bass was exactly what I needed to learn how to play bass. And I took the very same approach with my guitar, I took the very same approach with my keyboard, I took the very same approach with my flute and my clarinet. I did not think that I deserved, as a beginning clarinetist, to have a, um, a buffet R13. No, <laughs> not at all. And I want you to have the same, very, the very same mentality. So finding a good, in the main road, beginning saxophone that's in great shape, that's in really good repair, is where we should be heading. Stay in the main road. Again, we have uh, videos already out there, uh, and we have videos planned. And, and the best way to find out what we're doing here on the Saxophone Factory is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Bing. If you, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you'll know when we post. And um, check out the shorts and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, we got to get out of here and make room for somebody else. So um, listen, we'll see you when we see you. Remember, keep practicing.